Welcome back to part two of my pepper saga. Stay tuned. <laughs> this is what my jalapeno looked like when I left for the Heirloom Expo. If I'd been more observant, I might have been concerned about those white spots because the same plant looked like this when I got back. When I returned, we were in a heat wave and my figs were splitting faster than I could make fig jam. My pineapple guavas were coming in and the Aunt Ruby's German green tomatoes had to be dealt with, not to mention a dozen or more tobacco hornworms. And I was only home for three days before I left to visit my mother for her birthday and see her new place in Tennessee. When I got back, there were all those Aunt Ruby's tomatoes to harvest and give away, and the vine had to be taken out, and pineapple guavas had to be eaten and made chutney. All I managed was an assessment of the peppers. And I won't be using these plant tags again because the permanent marker wore off and it didn't even rain. But I learned that every single plant had been attacked by leaf miner. Only the leaves seemed to be affected, not the peppers. But the very next day, I was in Idaho to look at some properties, my third trip of the month. Would I finally have that large garden I'd dreamt of for five years? The Thursday after I returned, most of my peppers looked like this urfa. One or two ripe peppers, but no leaves. But I had to process tomatoes for canning and make cooking videos, and there was that spittle bug on my acacia tree, and I squeezed in a theater rehearsal. Two hours after receiving direction from Chris Cappiello, I was headed back to Idaho for a closer look. My fourth trip. When I got home, I had a lot of ripe peppers to harvest. That's the orange tie, the tall one. And this is a, I have more than one volunteer, red stem malabar spinach growing up. There were a lot of volunteers in the peppers. There were four clocks, several tomatoes that got planted out, but every one of these got this while I was at the Heirloom Expo. So then I hung the leaf miner strips, although the damage is done. It's a few little, insects on there. Let's see over here. This has a few bugs on it. The leaf miner seems to have gone on this very same spots that already looked bad. This is a Mars beaver and it hasn't produced. Oh wait. Oh shoot. That just that just snapped off without even trying. You see I think that's part of all of this that's affected the peppers. Whoops. That should not have snapped off that easily. This is loaded with nice big jalapenos. So I made my small garden big harvest video. Two days later, I was on a plane to Northern California to see my son Walker. He was helping out a memorial roping event in honor of his former mentor. So I tagged along. Watch for my upcoming video. Next day, he tagged along with me to Annie's Annuals and Perennials. Over the next 10 days, the peppers continued to deteriorate. It was the beginning of the end. I still had a few blooms, but not much hope. And it was October. Now, the leaf miner happened at the 1st of September, but it has leached out the leaves have leached of their color and they're dropping on their own. So, this is very upsetting. There are some newer leaves at the top that might be okay. I have 
done a treatment on the soil with mycelium solution, but I think the damage is done. Every single plant was affected. And when I read last year about bacterial spot, there's no cure for bacterial spot. This is the only Aruba hybrid I've got going. And this is Capia, which is the popular sweet pepper commercially grown in Turkey. I ordered several varieties from Ford's Fiery Seeds for 2016, which were the Black Finger, Capia, and Syrian Fortress, Morris Bieber. Anyway, that's where we're at on October the 9th. If you're noticing that there's not a lot of green behind me, it's because on Thursday, Eric and I took off almost every leaf. My plan is to harvest today, then I'm going to assess which plants have no fruit and no flowers, and they're going to be destroyed. And as you can see, they're still producing peppers, and the peppers are still really beautiful, which is why I have decided it's not blight, because that would affect the fruit too. But in addition to that, when I came back after just two nights away, there was a leaf miner curled up in each one of these yellow spots. I think there was some overwatering involved too because a good tip is just because your pepper leaves may kind of dip and look a little limp in the afternoon in the heat of the sun, always check with your moisture meter and make sure that your peppers in containers really do need a drink of water before you douse them again. Wet. I am going to have to destroy the soil, the pots, the plants, and the seeds. I can't even replant my own seeds from next year because this can be carried in the seed, which may explain how I got it this year. It's interesting because the peppers in the front yard didn't get the leaf miner. So it was like the leaf miner descended like from another planet right here and just did its damage. Now, as soon as I got back, I installed these blue sticky traps, which are for leaf miner and thrip, but too little too late. If I had done that earlier, who knows? You may have noticed that I am not a quitter. I will be back. I will be growing peppers again, maybe with fewer plants so that I can manage the situation better. And I may have more sweet peppers but I won't grow Aruba Hybrid or California Wonder again because they just take too long to develop. It is the middle of October and I haven't had a single California Wonder pepper yet. So I am going to focus on some other varieties that develop faster. Those are wonderful peppers. I just don't have the time <laughs> or the sun. <laughs> Speaking of limited sun, let me just show you the narrow window between this tree and my bamboo where my peppers get full sun, which is only about three or four hours a day tops. Here we go. I'm going to harvest. I'm going to delete a few plants and I'm going to do a foliar spray and water them with some fertilizer and see where we're at in a couple of weeks. And these are the three varieties that are not ripe at the moment. I really depend upon your support of this channel to help it grow. Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.